Al-Hadith Al-Khamis, the fifth hadith from the chapter of Al-Yaqeen wa Tawakkul. Yaqeen, we usually translate as certainty. Certainty is an objective. Certainty is a good that is sought for its own right. Because certainty is at the essence of the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it goes further than ma'rifah because it's your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's your confidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true and that His promise is true. That everything that He has told you about will be as He has told you. And the fruit of certainty is tawakkul. So the second part of the chapter is reliance on Allah, certainty and reliance. Relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can only be the product of certainty. So certainty is an objective in and of itself. In the fifth hadith, he narrates, rahmatullahi alayhi, with his senate to Jabir radiallahu anhu, أنه غزا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل نجد فلما قفل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قفل معه أي قفل جابر مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So Jabir is the one who narrates and the person before him is speaking in the third person about Jabir. He said, I narrate from Jabir that he uh, battled or went out on campaign with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the direction of Najd. Right here, anything to the east of Hijaz. Anything to the east of Hijaz. فَلَمَّا قَفَلَ And this is in the sixth year, Ghazwati. That Ghazwati that the battle of that huh? And when the Prophet والسلام, returned, Jabir returned with him, and as they were traveling back to Medina, it was the middle of the day. It was the time of the Zahira huh? and the best time to take a nap, right? It's too hot to travel. Hmm? They've just been in battle. Uh, they're returning, probably a little bit broken and we weary. Okay, so they reach a valley that is full of a certain type of Ida tree. Tayyib. And فَنَزَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet ﷺ gets down, right, and starts traveling. وَتَفَرَّقَ النَّاسُ يَسْتَظِلُّونَ بِالشَّجَرِ And the people separated and dispersed, seeking shade from one of the many trees that were there. The commentators will say that the sentence, seeking shade from the trees, is the reason for the words they dispersed from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because why else would they leave his side, right? Because everyone was looking for a tree to take a nap under. And in another narration, and we left the biggest one and most comfortable one for the Messenger alayhi salatu wasallam. وَنَزَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَحْتَ سَمَرَةً. He 
laid down under a Samora tree in that valley. فَعَلَّقَ بِهَا سَيْفَهُ وَنِمْنَا نَوْمَةً And he hung his sword on the tree and all of us went into a deep sleep. فَإِذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَدْعُونَا إِذَا عِنْدَهُ أَعْرَابِيٌّ And then all of a sudden, we had been in a deep sleep and we hear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling us. When we got there, we found an Arabi, a Bedouin Arab from the Nejd area, huh, where they were fighting in Bez, uh, Ghazwati, that Riqa, uh, sitting with him. And the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam said to us, Inna hadha, right? It's like one of the like roughest things you can say to a person. Ya hadha, right? Come here, that one, right? Or this one pulled my own sword on me, right? In the hada, because you say hada for things, right? In the hada, ikhtarata alayya sayfi wa ananaim. This one pulled my sword out on me while I was sleeping. Fastaykaftu wa huwa fi yadihi sultan. Huh? And I woke up and it's in his hand and he's brandishing it, right? Like he's going to strike with it. Kala, and he said to me, Mayyam na'aka minni. Who is going to prevent me? Really, the sentence here is not as we use yamna normally. Who is going to defend you from me? Who is going to be your mani'a effectively to prevent me from striking you here? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is laying down, his eyes are just open, there's someone standing over him, about to strike him with his own sword, and he says, Allah. Right. In this first narration, Thalathan. Right. Thalathan, some of the commentaries say that he said, who's going to huh, defend you from me three times? And others say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah. Allah, Allah, three times. Taladu then, bi dhikr jilala, jalala, right? Because of how much he enjoyed saying the name of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Walam yuaqibhu wajalas. And this narration ends with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did not punish him, huh? And he sat down. Who sat down? Either Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat up from his reclining position or the Arabi sat down, the commentator said, because all of a sudden he felt safe with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's the effect of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam when you're with him. SubhanAllah. You feel safe. Ya Rabbi, Allahumma ja'alna مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الدنيا والأخرى في الدنيا مع أخلاقه والصلوات عليه وحبه وفي الآخرة وفي الآخرة بجواره وفي رواية and there's another narration and each narration is giving further detail in this narration جابر the first is in Bukhari and Muslim. The next narration, Jabir says, Kunna, now Jabir is speaking in the first person, Ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bidat al right? And according to most opinions, it was in the Senate, Senate Sadisa, Fil Hijra. And it's called that al Who knows why the battle was called that al Tell me, O oh, American Muslims, why? It was the battle of that Anyone? Everyone knows that That The one, like the patched battle, the battle of the patches. Nobody? I heard someone's afraid. Right? So what they used to tell us was that it's called Ghazwati That because they didn't have sufficient footwear and while they were traveling and while they were traveling home uh, whatever foot gear they were wearing was all torn up some people didn't even have uh, uh, ni'al, uh, sandalat, um, 
or shabashib, as some might say, right? Uh, and that what they had was getting holes in it and their feet were getting torn up and so they would wrap rags around their feet to make it home. But that's not the, that's the well-known one. That's the one that we were told here in America. But there are other opinions as well, right? Some of the uh, scholars have said that the name of the mountain where the battle took place was called Datariqa. Others said that all sides and everyone participating raised their banners and it looked like a patchwork, right, on the battlefield. Huh? And some say that uh, the mountain where they held the battle, uh, the earth around it had all different types of colors so it looked like a patched fabric, right? So there's different opinions, and one of them is that their feet were getting torn up and they wrapped them up with rags. Rifa, right, is another word for, for rags or patches. Right? So there's multiple opinions. So be aware that any one of these is good, but sometimes when the deen is being interpreted to us and for us by a single party of people, or a group of people under the influence of particular ideologies or interpretations or only following particular books that are only going to bring one angle to us, we're not always getting the full picture. Right? And then what usually happens is the only thing I've ever heard is this interpretation. If I hear an alternative interpretation to what was told to me or read to me or I read in a book that I got from an ISNA conference in 1985, right? then I have to reject it because I haven't heard that before. Right? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Learning never stops. And that's the joy of learning. It would get boring if learning stopped. Right? And people get bored. Right? Teachers, scholars, some of them, they actually get bored with their knowledge because they stop learning. Right? But I saw people who never stopped learning. SubhanAllah. And they continue to study. Right? All of my shaykhs, they always were tulab al ilm studying. They studied with their shaykhs until their shaykhs died and there was none of their peers were left. Right? Or their seniors were left. And then some of them would just switch over to a more, like one of their colleagues who would like, maybe they thought, they believed that they'd gone further than them. Because they set out to learn, not to show off. Right? Not to be a know-it-all, not to be the center of attention. They set off to learn because they wanted to know. They wanted to understand. And they were driven by that desire to know. And they weren't watching a pot to wait for it to boil. You know? They were just doing what, what needed to be done. Allah help us. فَإِذَا أَتَيْنَا عَلَى شَجَرَةٍ ظَلِيلًا تَرَكْنَاهَا لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So when we first arrived at a big and shady tree, we left it for Rasulullah اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأَنَّهُ سَيِّدُ الْمُقَدَّمْ Right? Huh? Because he is the Sayyid, right? He is the leader. He is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they think about what is in his best interest first before they think about what is in their best interest. فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَسَيْفُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالشَّجَرَةِ So a man from the idolaters came and the sword of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was hung on the tree. The man's name was? Ghawrath ibn al-Harith no. from Bani Muharib and he was from the people that they had been fighting at the battle of Ghazwati uh, that Riqa and he followed them all of this way and was waiting for his opening waiting for a moment right? he snuck in while they were asleep he took the messenger's sword والسلام, and he thought he had him فَاخْتَرَتَهُ فَقَالَ right? and so, so he Unsheathed it, اخترطه, he pulled it out, and he said, Takhafani. What does Takhafani mean? Right? You fear me. Right? So it, that's not what he's saying, is it? So the mafum, for those who are reading the Arabic, 
أَتَخَافَنِي right? But we have the sense, the understanding that he means when he says you fear me, meaning do you fear me? Right? أَتَخَافَنِي Do you fear me? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at him and says with all of the pain of someone selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا No And what is going on here in this moment? Because in the next, huh? In another narration, he drops the sword. The confidence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the yaqeen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so strong, and he's hit with this. And the Arabs used to be very, very honest people. Huh? Believe it or not. Right? And there are still among them some who are very, very honest people. They could be up to all types of no good. But if something was haq, they would see it as haq. And it would cause them to stop. That's fitrah. Right? And their memory, the memory of these people, serves as an example for us of an aspect of the fitrah. And that also becomes a pastoral objective for those who are raising a community. Now, raising people to recognize truth is truth and not try to cover it over. So he's struck by this and he drops the sword. They said that the problem here was that this Arabi thought, for those of you all in the Aqidah classes at Lighthouse, he thought that the sword was the qatil. That the sword was what was going to affect death. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his certainty and his confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew who the real actor in the dunya is. Who the real actor in reality is. And it's not the sword and it's not this Arabi. Huh? فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى You did not kill them, it was Allah who killed them. And you did not fire when you fired, or you did not throw when you threw, it was Allah who threw. You did not throw when you threw. <coughs> That's strange. Because he أَثْبَتَ لَهُمْ الرَّمِي ثُمَّ نَفَاهُ عَنْهُمْ Right? He established for them that they threw or they fired arrows. But then he said, you didn't. When you did it, it was really Allah who did it. Right? Because top shelf tawheed, not Kmart tawheed. Right? Top shelf tawheed is complete monotheism. There is none in existence who has an essence like the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is none in existence who has an attribute like the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is none who has an action alongside the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because every action is the khalq of the khaliq and there is no khaliq right huwa alladhi khalaqakum wa ma ta'maloon and here is the yaqeen of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's witnessing it he's beholding it yashaduhu wa qarrata aynihi fi shuhudihi lillahi ta'ala ka'annahu yarahu na ka'annahu yarahu because every moment of the believer if their intention and their focus is right is ibadah and your ibadah should be could be ka'annaka Tarahu, as though you were seeing him. Allahumma ja'alna anda dhalik al-maqam awdunahu al-maqam al-maqam al-rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa lakin al-yaqeen al-jami'ah atakhafani aw takhafani qala la faqala faman yamna'uka minni who is going to defend you from me Qala Allah. SubhanAllah. It would be very frightening. Wa fi riwayati Abi Bakr in Ismaili fi sahihihi faqala may yamna'uka minni 
He said, who is going to defend you from me? قَالَ اللَّهُ فَسَقَتَ السَّيْفُ مِنْ يَدِي And, this, and the, the sword fell from his hand. فَأَخَذَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ السَّيْفَ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the sword, and some commentators will say, before the man was able to harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and other commentators said, no, even at the moment when he was able to deliver a, 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 a killing blow to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Asimahullah, he was protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at each moment and each step, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was confident in that. He took the sword and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this narration says back to the A'rabi, وَمَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنْ مِنْ Who's going to protect you from me now? And some of them said that the A'rabi was saying, who from the Nas is going to protect you? <coughs> Right? Who's here to protect you now? And he said, Allah, and that shocked him. And he stands up, takes the sword himself, turns back to the Arabi, and says, Who from the Nas is going to protect you here right now? And all the Arabi could say was, Kun khayra ahid. Right? Right? And he take hold of this situation in a good way. Right? That's all he could say. Be good. Maybe pardon me. Or return a bad deed with a good deed. Right? Kun khayra akhidin. And all of a sudden, this Arabi wants to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this moment, all of his hope is in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like the young man at the Fathi Mecca who was not ready to surrender, but everyone had surrendered. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is walking with Abu Bakr around the Kaaba, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, and the young man comes up behind him and he has a knife and he thinks he's going to take out Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right there. And Rasulullah turns around, puts his hand on his chest and says, what's going on, so and so? So, oh, no, I'm just making tawaf. And then later that young man says, up to that point, there was nobody more hated to me in the entire world other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, other than Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam. No one more hateful to me. Once he put his hand on my chest, in that moment, there was nobody more beloved to me in the entire world than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. So he says the same thing, تخافني, instead of saying أتخافني. And he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tashadu an la ilaha illallah, but the alif of istifham is mahru for saqid, right? Do you bear witness that there is no God but Allah? and that I am the Messenger of Allah, and the man in his honesty says, La, no, right? وَلَكِنِّي أُعَاهِدُكَ أَنْ لَا أُقَاتِلُكَ وَلَا أَكُونَ مَعْ قَوْمٍ يُقَاتِلُونَكَ But I will give you my oath, right? I will swear to you that I will never fight you, and I will never be with the people who are trying to fight you. What do you all have in your Arabic text? Do you have, um, فخل, do you have a ya with two dots? Or did they Egyptian it on us? Huh? Yours is a, uh, yours is a, um, a uh, alif uh, maqsura with no dots. Right. No. So if you all have it, it should be, uh, there shouldn't be any um, not attained. Right? It would be said. Right? And the text, this is printed in Damascus, um, or Beirut, but the Dawr is in Damascus. Um, and the right the commentators are in Damascus. Um, but um, this is not being done in Egypt. Right? So there's no reason for those dots to be there. If you have them, if you don't have them. Tayyip. 
فَخَلَّ سَبِيلَهُ فَأَتَى أَصْحَابَهُ So, he made this mu'ahada, he made this promise to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the earlier narration, the Prophet it uh, said that the Prophet لَمْ يُعَقِبْهُ Right? He didn't punish him. Right? Uh, here, he let him go. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, do you accept you know, Tawheed, do you accept the Risala? And he said, no, but I promise. And immediately notice this is important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seeing that this person does not want to be Muslim, but there is some value in letting him go, right? And letting him return to his people and mention what transpired here. Mention the fadl of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mention the karam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That that in its, of itself is a good even if this doesn't, if he doesn't convert. And later on he converts, they say, and he becomes one of the sahaba, sahiba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? But he's seeing that there's a benefit in just doing well by this one person. And some of the commentators will say, in hopes that maybe some of his people will incline toward Islam and Ibn Allan al-Bakri, the Mufti of Mecca, right, will say, incline to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahib al-Risala. Right, incline in the direction of the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam, because he is representative of Tawheed. He is representative of Deen Allah fil ard of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth. But notice that when you do good by someone that you share your city with, your neighborhood with, right, your space with, there doesn't have to necessarily be an insistence that this person's not going to convert, but at least they're going to say good things about Muslims, good things about Islam. They might even share that impression with other people, and in that is a good, a material good, a practical good, if that's all we can do. Because some people, if there's nothing in it for them, right, then there's no motivation. So there is a material and a practical good that returns back to you and your family and your community as believers. But notice what the ulama are saying about this. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sentiment is in hopes that maybe some of his people may say yes to Islam. He's ardently anxious over you. Huh? Naam. حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم He's harisun for his people because they are his ummah. Who's the ummah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم? First of all, the ummah of Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام begins with the bi'tha in Mecca and ends with the blowing of the horns at the end of time. Now. And his ummah is two umam. The ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in two parts. Ummat al-ijaba huh? and ummat al-da'wa. The ummah that has answered his invitation, whether they met him or didn't meet him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ummah that is being invited. Let us not reduce our deen to identity politics and make it a bastion, a bastille that we might use to seek refuge in, to separate us and differentiate us from them. Because now it's not deen anymore. It's just a badge. It's an identity, right? That makes me feel better about myself because I'm allowed to look at other people as inferior. Huh? That's not what the deen of Islam came to the world to do. Right? To separate this group from that group. Remember the power of interpretation. You read an ayah, you read a narration, and then there's the mafum that you get from it. 
is it really telling you that this is just a zero-sum game and it's us against them? Do it, if I may. It is you against your ego. It is you against evil. Nah. Your enemy is not a kafir because he's kafir. Your enemy is anyone who would harm an innocent person. Your enemy is someone who would do damage to someone who doesn't deserve it. And people who do that come in many flavors. Many flavors. That is the differentiator. <clears throat> and the first damage that can be done to a person is to misguide them away from the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To prevent people from the masajid of Allah, of course. This is misguidance, and this is harm, and this is damage. No. But if you want to start checking damage, then you got to start checking damage wherever it shows up. If people are messing with other people in the masjid, if people are abusing, if Muslims are abusing other Muslims, you should be able to step to them before you think you're going to step to someone else. Right? Get it right if you're going to get it. Right? Get it right if you're going to get it. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it mixed up. Don't be stupid. Hmm. Right? A woman used to throw garbage on the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't you be that woman who throws garbage on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those people became Muslim. They flew right after that. Don't be someone who in the name of Islam you throw garbage in the face of Rasulullah by misrepresenting his purposes and intentions in the world. If you want to be an Aadi Muslim, right? If you want to be the one who just gets into Jannah on a technicality, huh? then get out of everybody's way because we don't have time for you. We don't have time for you. Life is too short. And everyone's getting sick of you. If you want to be an Aadi Muslim, if you want to come here, li dunya yusibuha, aw imra'atin tamkihuha, hatta tahsulu ala the green card, hatta tahsulu ala al muatana. Right? If that's your purpose, fine. But just get out of the way. Put a sign on front of your messages. So that we know not to go in that masjid. Because it's not dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the maqasid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ahdaf, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It's just your country club. Right? If I'm going to go to a country club, I'm going to go to a proper country club. With what is it? 18 holes of golf. Right? I'm not going to come to some, right? Half stepping, no fun country club. Right? Where people are boring. And the food's bad, huh? Put a sign up so we know, right? And y'all can go your way and we'll go our way. We don't have time. People will be drinking a lot of Kool-Aid though. So he went back to his people. I just came to you from the best of people. SubhanAllah. Imagine somebody runs in and said, You would not believe who I just met. Right? The best of people. Huh? MashaAllah. He's beautifully handsome. And his akhlaq, his character, was amazing. يَأْخُذُ بِكَ نَعْمُ كَانَ خَلَقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ So he experienced the Qur'an. MashaAllah. Now, we'll keep moving. MashaAllah. The hadith is saddest. I like that's one of my favorite hadiths. The safe hooked up on the tree. 
In the sixth hadith, عن عمر رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله Umar عنه, says that I heard the Messenger of Allah say were you to rely on Allah as is his right to be relied upon or haqqa tawakkulihi and the way this phrase works tatahaqqaku huh? tawakkulukum right Meaning that, yeah, Rabbi, that your rely, were you to rely on Allah in such a way that your station of reliance was to be fully realized as it should be realized, huh? He would give you what you need. He would give you your sustenance. He would take care of your worries and your affairs. Huh? Just like he sustains the birds of Jinsu Tayr, right? At Tayra, that he sustains the birds. They go out in the morning with empty stomachs and they come back in the evening and their stomachs are well lined, meaning full, right? They go out in the morning with empty stomachs and they come back in the evening with their stomachs full. He would sustain you like he sustains the birds. The point is though, he already does sustain you like he sustains the birds. But you would see what the bird sees and you would have the yaqeen that the bird has and the tawakkul and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the bird knows and knows no other. You would know no other because not having other any other option in mind is the essence of yaqeen. Confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you make that effort and you go out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of you. Allah is going to have your back. Allah is going to get you. Right? MashaAllah. You had that confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would go out with peace of mind and no worry, and you would return with air in your lungs to, ble to breathe, right, and a heart that will pump your blood, and a little bit of sustenance to keep your back straight. No. Because the bird is at peace. The bird has serenity. The bird has tumatnina. The bird has sakina, but you have not realized your tawakkul to that point, so you're afraid, and you worry, and you're concerned, and you're all twisted up, and you act without ethics, and you do this that's not in your best interest, and you do this to one another. When people get scared, they get desperate. And when they get desperate, they do cruel things to one another. At the heart of cruelty, at the heart of abuse, is either a person with no soul, and we have those, there is such a thing now, or fear. And more often than not, is fear. More often than not, is fear huh? and a feeling of something missing in someone's self worth. If a person is not even seeing themselves, then they have nothing to fear about some emptiness in their self-worth, right? Subhanallah. Imam Suyuti will say that this hadith is not an example 
of being encouraged or advising people to not make an effort to not try to earn a living. Because when the bird sets out, it sets out to earn a living. It's only it's confident that, huh? If I make an effort, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring blessing to that effort. Right? No. And so the same with the believer. It's about not having fear. Ya Rabbi, Allah give us the maqam of Jumat-Nina. MashaAllah. No. Hadith. So I'm going to guess that that clock's wrong. No, clock's wrong. It's a quarter to nine right now. No. The seventh hadith. An Abi Umara al Bara. Ibn Azib radiyallahu anhuma radiyallahu an Bara and radiyallahu an Azib kilahuma lahum as-suhba al-zahir qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya fulanu ila awayta ila firashika faqul Bara says radiyallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to someone, Ya fulan, or so and so, When you go to your bed at night, say, Allahumma aslam tu nafsi ilayk, O oh Allah, I have submitted myself to you. O wajjahtu wajhi ilayk, and I have directed myself to you. Meaning, I have directed the entirety of myself to you. وَفَوَّلْتُ أَمْرِ إِلَيْكَ Can I have put all of my affairs in your hands? Trust. Tawakkul. Which can only come from certainty. وَأَلْجَأْتُ ظَهْرِ إِلَيْكَ I know that you have my back. رَغْبَةً وَرَحْبَةً إِلَيْكَ Out of hope in you and desire for you and at the same time balanced out with fear or of you because the believer, right, can't fly without two wings, fear and hope, right, and keeping those two balanced until they get to the end of life and end of life moments, right, and they just need to go for hope, right, and if we have a loved one who's reaching the end of life, just go for hope, right? And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything. Because people aren't going to be doing a, a lot of makeup stuff. And the last thing we need for them is to be worrying and fearing something that they're in Allah's hands. MashaAllah. And Allah's hands are big, right? Yes. Allah's hands are big. Right? Allah's generosity is big. Allah's power is big. Allah's ability is big. Allah's clemency and rahmah and compassion is big. Wasiat kulla shay. Right? And this is where you take people when they're in the end of life moments. Right? Don't need to read to them stuff about the hellfire and all of that. That was before. And if it didn't work then, it's not much can be done about it right now. Right? Let's be right with the end of life moments. <coughs> and know that every time your car starts messing up, right? or a situation gets scary, or you get the flu, you just need to consider yourself in an end-of-life moment, okay? So that, and you know what to do when the real end-of-life moment comes. Ya Rabbi. La malja'a wa la manja minka illa ilayk. There is no refuge from you or escape from you, there is no refuge, and there is no escape from you except to you. Here in this dua, he is testifying to his witness of this as the truth, and I know that there is no escape from you. I know there is no one I can take refuge or nowhere I can take refuge in from you. Rational theology. Huh? Rational theology is important here, actually. Because here is where rational theology can save someone's life. Save someone's iman. If you know rationally that 
There is no escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if at any point in your life you're feeling lonesome, you're having misgivings, you're feeling like this isn't working out, and you're thinking, do I believe anymore? Am I going to be a Muslim anymore? Well, Iyadu Billah and Allah protect our Imam. But if this khatir, if this thought comes to a person, but they've known that it doesn't matter because you're still not going to get away from Allah, there's nowhere to go. In Lam Tarba bi Qadai Fakhruj min Taht Samai wa Ajit wa Bhat. I'm Rabban Siwaya. If you're not content with my decree, then get out from under my sky and find a Lord other than me. Can't be done. Right? It's mustahil. No. So when somebody knows and understands reality with the precision of rational theology, right, that we use, right, to uh -huh, break down. Hellenic philosophy or any other, or Buddhist philosophy or Zoroastrian philosophy or continental philosophy or uh, existentialism, right, and all these things, uh, when they know, it makes it harder to get away from Allah, right? SubhanAllah. So there's a lot there. There's something there for the heart. And there's something there for the aql. And you are body, mind, and soul. And not just body. No. Amentu bikitabika ladhi anzalta. I believe in the book that you have revealed. Wa bi nabiyika ladhi arsalta. And in the prophet that you have sent. Fa innaka in mitta. So that ends. The statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he says, alayhi salam. So if you die that night, if they, if you die this night of yours, you die on the fitrah, because are not believing all of these things that we testify to when we sleep, is the degree to which. We've drifted from the center. We've dis drifted from the fitrat Allah illati fataran nas alayha. Right? And that is more real in the world that we live in right now than any time. And I've said to you all before, the calling of the Muslim in at least this country, because this is our country, the duty the responsibility of anyone who says La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the coming years in this country will be first and foremost to be a touchstone for Americans to know what it means to be a human being. Where else are they going to find out? Right now they have a lot of alternatives. Right? That are doing a better job than we are. But we have to get ourselves into this position and start acting like human beings because we don't act like human beings. Right? Open up any book of the akhlaq of Islam, the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and read it and measure from there. Right? I know I fall way short. Huh? We need to get into a position where we can fulfill that duty because the filtrah Right? Is that the essence of Islam? And Islam is here and sent into the world to protect people and show them how to be on the fitrah. And look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you die this night of yours, you die on the fitrah. But what did he say that fitrah was? To know these things. So that when you are sat up in your grave, you're like, ready. The angels show up. Maybe they're not looking really gruesome, but they're not that handsome, right? Because I'm not that good that, you know, so I'm still a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm ready, right? Inshallah, right? And they come. No, no, no. I know, I know. My Lord's Allah. Rasulullah Muhammad is my messenger. I know, I know. And they haven't even asked yet. That's where you want to be, right? That's where you want to be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us there.
Mm -hmm. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll like brush back their hair or something like that and they'll be more handsome. Right? حَتَّ لَا نُجِسُ مِنْهُمْ خِيْفَةً Right? But to the good people, and who are the good people? Don't think you know. To the good people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who the good people are. We're not here to be judges of people. We're here to figure it out for ourselves. To the good people, they'll be handsome and they'll put you, huh, in comfort. And they'll put you at ease. Y'all are the good people. That's what I think. Allahumma al-haqli bikum. Ya Rabbi, in the Islam, feel good to me. MashaAllah. Fitra. So, I mean, you could have, like, a whole, like, four-month dars just on all the meanings in each ibara in this dua and what that means and what's the reality behind it then you'd have to embody it of course because theory is just not enough no and in uh, additional uh, aspect of this narration also on Barra, uh, from Barra ibn Azib radiallahu anhu that the messenger alayhi salatu says إِذَا أَتَيْتَ مَجْعَكَ which means the same thing as إِذَا أَوَيْتَ إِذَا فِرَاشِكَ if you come to the place where you will lay make wudu the wudu that you make for prayer ثُمَّ تَجَعَ then lay down عَلَى شِقِّكَ الْأَيْمَنَ on your right side and say and he mentioned the same thing mentioned above ثُمَّ قَالْ and make that the last thing you say. MashaAllah. Allah bring us there. Mm -hmm.